Hey there, welcome back. So let's run the, this case, the channel. So previously we did the setup just to show you how to set up the pre boundary conditions. Now I'm directly reading the reading the solution. So remember up here. So what I will do, I will go for runs, or runs, and less, and then DNS. And I'm going to show you a few scenes, a few actions, but I'm not going to run the whole stuff. So remember that when you open and you see init means initialization, everything zero, final, you have the final solution. So most of the time I will go directly open the final just to show you. Okay. In this case, I'm opening the init, the initialization of the runs case. Okay. So it will be exactly the same for a case if that is going to change. It, it is the Torrents model. Okay. So just to point out that the setup is pretty much the same. So remember that you go here. Well, in runs is steady. Okay. So we put steady there when you move to, to a scale resolving will be transient. Remember also scale resolvers are, are 3D. So we move here. You set up your model for this point. I would set just K omega. This one with this correction. We know how it works and everything. And again, materials. So you here have the description, the properties that you we want to get this Reynolds shared Reynolds number. And to point out something about here, boundary conditions. Again, we already addressed this one, but just to point out how here you 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 go here, you set it, and you have here the periodic condition that you, you can select your pressure gradient. Okay, so in previous video, I think I put one, but it doesn't make a difference. Minus one, one, it will be the direction that it that it moves. So I wanted to move in the positive direction set. So you put here minus one. Okay. We'll reduce. And this is the one that it will move it. Okay. But doesn't matter. You have two options. Also my flow is up to you. So this is the case setup. What is important. Okay. And I want to stress this one when setting this is this simulation. So this is the advanced, but when we move to, to the less or DNS, you need to set up all your monitors. Okay. You need to monitor many quantities. In this case, we set the monitors, but we're interested in this watch shear average and y plus average or it should be average instead of maximum okay remember so let me check this definition and put here average okay so we're set up here i will press initialize and now i will go and let me run about 100 iterations okay so we use the standard method okay so it, let's say I, I recommend when you are running steady Okay, using the what is proposed, the default one, it, it is okay. So the copper, then when we move to transient, it's better to use something else because this is very expensive. Okay, it, it uses a lot of resources. So this is all. Okay, so I will run 100 iterations. Uh, now I will write the files that I would like to overwrite the files that I have there. So it was asking me if I want to overwrite here. So as you see here, time, time series means that you already have a solution there, some files. Okay that I run like 2000 iterations. So see that we're running here. This is the runs. So the idea is following with this workflow that first you start with the runs, you, you compute integral length scales, you refine your mesh according to your physics that you're getting. Uh, you get also some, 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 some insight about the, the physics, what you're doing. Then you move to all runs using the previous solution. So just to refresh your memory, Okay, about that. Let me go here. Okay, and show you that workflow. So it will be this workflow. Okay, so basically you start with with the run simulation, okay. You compute integral lens scales, get an idea of the mesh. This is a good one, okay. Check the physics, everything, and then you move to Urans. In the Urans, you get a good initial condition, and with this good initial condition and a better mesh, compute integral lens scales and grid refinement ratio. You move to the to the scale resolvent, and that's all, okay. So that is a recommended workflow, okay. And okay, in this case it's running. Let me go back here. So I'm here. Okay. So just to point out also here, I put the interpolation files. Okay. This interpolation files also, I let the simulation run a lot. So here we have a final solution of a runs, a final solution of a wool runs of a less and so on. 
So look at that running here. So we have a average Y plus. Okay, I changed this one. Something about nine. So we're there in the viscous layer. Probably it would be better to make it finer. But look, the 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 wall stresses the wall. So it's approaching asymptotically to the to the value that where we are expecting. Okay. So this, as you see here, this will take a long time to get to that value. Okay. So what I want to do here. Okay, it's almost there in a hundred iteration. So I will go and will open the final solution that we have there. Okay, but also we'll copy this time series. Okay, we'll use this time series to replot these this variables that we have there, just to show you what's happening here in the runs. Okay, so I put it there, have there. Case data, let me open final. Okay, so we're here and I want to show you, okay, so let me plot here just to take a look at solution. So see that this is an average solution that we have, okay? So probably you don't identify this one with what you have seen in theory because that one is, uh, and let me go and just plot here, let me go here and that one should be here. So the runs is just an average solution. Okay, in reality, probably you have seen some papers about this one, is this what you have, okay? But in the runs, we don't capture anything about these strips here, okay? We're capturing the mean behavior. So see here, when we compare the mean, they are very similar, okay? So this is what we're doing. And the runs is good given that you see a Basically, it's getting the exact solution that we know here in about 3,000 iterations. Instead, the others you need to, to, to iterate for a really long time. So this is what we have. This is the velocity profile, okay? And let me plot the monitors here. So residuals that you have that information, they're safe. See that these are your residuals and see that it's actually 7,000 iterations. Even if it's a simple problem, you need to let it run a lot okay in this case and also we have these plops there so let me plop this one okay it's reading the file okay this is see that where we're maximum by plus something about eight i don't recall it's maximum and average it should be maximum and if i plot this one see again here see that it's approaching very slowly to one okay actually I need to run more longer, okay? But see that it's approaching there very, very slowly, okay? So this is the idea. But what is interesting, remember that to generate those interpolation fields, so see that here we already have a solution, okay? And this solution can be used as a starting point for the next one, it can be a quartz or finer mesh. So you can generate those interpolation fields to generate then, you, you go here, interpolate, and just write data, choose your data, and that's all. Okay, so domain, and then you create, I will call it inter one. And that, that is your interpolation data that you can read in the ne next case, in the next mesh. Okay, so this is the way I would li like to work. And it doesn't matter the solver that you're using, okay? They all, they all will give you this option now to interpolate data in this way. Finally, just to close this, Okay, so see that here we have this this field, the, the, this field, the solution, but also we can add a perturbation. We can perturb the solution, and that will be a much better initial condition for the runs. So to add a perturbation, remember that you go here again in the text user interface, and now it will be solved initialization. Okay, and here see that you have this condition init term. Bowl. So I will use this one. And that one will add me, will add their perturbation. See there, it's adding a perturb fill. And now this is much better starting point for a, for, for a scale resolving simulation. If I put this, this in the runs, immediately the runs will smooth all this okay, fluctuation. Same will be for the old runs. The old runs will it's most this probably will concern something, but you you are not going to see anything. We're not going to see those strings there 
okay? Because everything has been averaged by the model, okay? So at this point, this is the runs, okay? This is the first step. It's the one you can go ahead and compute your integral scales, everything, verify that. I'm not showing that here, but just to compute the integral length scale, you will go here and create those new fields and so on. So now let's move to the U runs, okay? I will go and I will open the final, okay? And let me go here and U runs, we have time series. Okay, so let me open. And the point here, okay, see that we have a solution here, okay? So basically this is a solution obtained from the runs, but you want also, you can perturbate it. You will see that the U runs will also smooth those, those fluctuations. Unless you use a very small mesh, you are not going to see those fluctuations. The thing that I want to point out that now it is on a steady, remember, transient time step here, you said transient. And then when it comes here to, to set in the methods, okay, you choose. So usually it's a good idea to go for, for second order and this option, non-iterative. This is the one that it will advance much faster than the standard like this iterative okay this will have advanced much faster but remember that you need a cfl number less than one to for stability reasons do not initialize because you're starting from this or you can choose and go interpolate and read an interpolated data just to show you you go like this you look for the data so just to show here so see interpolation fields and let me read this field Okay, this is the field generated from, from a DNS. And see that when I interpolate it, okay, ba, ba, ba. what did I do? Okay, let me read, okay, interpolate. Okay, so I think I read the wrong file or it's not written, okay, read interpolate and Okay, somehow it's not reading. Okay, let, let me later we see this one. So the point here, we are in the urns and here in the numerics, be careful that this case we're going to run, but to get also an estimate of this, uh, of this time step, okay? So if, if I launch this simulation, you're going to see the time step. Remember that here now you need to set a monitor for the maximum CFL. So the idea is also in this, who runs that is very stable, we can play around with time step and get the ideal time step to move to the less. So in the less, we know that it's extremely recommended to have a, a, a CFL about one. So this is a, a, a rather large value, okay? So if you run this one, I'm not going to run, but if you run this one, you will see that your CFL will be really high, but the who runs doesn't have problems, okay? So you, you, you can do that. Okay, so see that this was wrong for a really long time, 100 seconds to get all the statistics, okay? And if I go here, so remember that you can plot the Q criterion, and here I have the isosurfaces of Q criterion, but you don't see anything because those structures, okay, actually I didn't put it, those structures doesn't exist here. We, we, we don't see those structures here. So what I wanted to show you, if I go here in monitors, and where so see that I set many here, ma many monitors. So see that in custom fields, you have the custom fields. So I have my uh, Reynolds stresses here, normal and she well, just the normals, the resolve kinetic energy, tau velocity, u tau, u plus. I compute that all those quantities because I can do that plot. Okay, the normalized velocity plot, I can do it in this case. I will show you later. Okay, so to let me plot residuals, plot. So see that this were my residuals and we can also plot this quantity. Okay, so it says that there is no data. Why, who runs? Okay, I think I'm reading the wrong case. Okay, let me go back, uh, final. Okay, this is the right case. And this, File, let me see. Okay, yeah, you, I have all the information there. So it should be working. Okay, I don't know what was the issue here. Okay, so now, and let me go where I was. Okay, let me minimize here. I want to plot 
this one. Okay. Da, 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 da. Why is not plotting? There is no data to plot. So the monitor, the receipt, well, plot. Okay, but this report plot. Okay, let me see this one. Okay, the data. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not reading the, the default data, but I can go here and uh, use the post processing tool plot. Okay, and let's plot the, plot the data using this tool. So I would plot the wall share stress plot signal. Okay, and here we have the wall share stresses. Okay, automatic. And see that these are the quantities, okay? So this one, okay, is strange because it's just showing me that, okay, I have like the last seconds of the simulation. So likely, I think I overwrite those statistics. So let me see here, what do I have here? Yeah, I, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I have it from one to, yeah. I should have all my statistics there. So let me copy this. Okay, put it here. They are there. And let me go low input file. I am Urans. And let me read this one. Okay, so now you, I have the complete signal. Okay. And why is cutting? Okay, I have access. Okay, so plotting here is just showing me the last part, but click to run. Should let me go for it. Okay, this is strange. I don't know why it's not plotting the, the whole stuff. Okay, so I have the complete signal, but it's not plotting. But anyway, probably in the next one we're going to see. So the idea here is that we have this. Okay, and just to show you, I can go again and let me add the perturbation here. So see that I added this. Okay. And again, I don't see the perturbation. Okay, so let me go here. So usually, let me see, pop, pop, bam. In it. Turn, okay. And velocity, ah, oh, okay, I was plotting the, I think I was plotting the, I was plotting the average field, okay. So, sorry about that. It sometimes happens. Okay, so let me go back here. Okay, so just the solution and then is I add this perturbation here, okay, and the velocity. But here, and be careful, it's not on a steady statistic, it's instantaneous values. Here you see that you have your field. So now you can write this field. Let me go write export, no interpolation, write data. I will kill, I will call it y init like this see that i wrote this one and let's say that now we move to the next case you now so now let's move to the last case and let's imagine that in this last case we want we're using a finer mesh so the idea here would be when you move here less or dns or whatever we open the initialization Okay, so in this, we don't have anything, okay? So basically we choose the model, okay? So you sh it's up to you to choose any model and this one is running the well, okay? But uh, my recommendation is go for this one, the kinetic energy, this one, the one equation. It's a dynamic model that it will give you information as the about the subgrid scale the kinetic energy. So I read this one, I go here, you see that you have nothing. And if I go here, interpolate, read data, just look for the data that we just save here, this one. 
And imagine that this is a, a finer mesh. So we're coming from a quarter to a finer. So it is doing that, that, that interpolation. So velocity here and see that you have that field. So now this will be your starting point for your orders. Okay. So this is a very good initial condition. And usually when you do these channel problems, you need to add something like this because otherwise immediately everything will be damp or you will need to let it run for really long times. Okay. So usually it's extremely recommended to do the, this stuff. And let me move this information here. Okay. I know that actually I was working in the wrong for wrong directory. So that's why it wasn't reading the files previously. So let me go DNS fluent case where here. Okay. I have, let me move all this time series here. So see that I run for a really long time. See that this file is starting to, to, to become large files. Okay. So now that I have that, I can do some plotting. Okay. So let me go. Okay. Let me show you that you, you set up everything, the case, whatever your method. See that here, I'm not using couple and using these methods that are more economical. This is what is recommended and see that we're using also a good robust and accurate numerics. Okay. So here is not desirable to use a stuff like second order win. You need to go for bounded central difference and or central differences. When it comes to controls, standard values, set up all your monitors here. So see that I'm setting many, many monitors. So see that I'm plotting, see that information in all these points. So there are many points here, normal to the wall. So they are accumulating energy. Okay. Computing statistics for everything. So you need to set up all those monitors that you have here. Okay. Those derived quantities. So see that I have UUVV. These are the normal Reynolds stress, the resolves to the energy, shear, Reynolds stresses, velocity fluctuations. Okay. So I put many monitors, many quantities to control. Okay. So this is important. Do not forget to do, the, to do this one because the start, uh, scale resolver simulations are, are about this, about getting those statistics. Okay. And after setting all your monitors, you can go, okay. And run your case. Okay. With no problem. So see here, I will, I will launch. Okay. I will, will overwrite those files just to show you the couple initial iterations. Okay. And see that it will start to do everything the first iterations and computing all your statistics, what I want to plot. Okay. So remember where it's starting from a very good initial condition, but even though we have here, this monitor, the shear stress, so see that we have this, that is not starting precisely now from, from, from one, this is the fluctuation that we added in the field. So slowly it will start to oscillate and it will take a really long time now to get those statistics. Even if it's a small mesh, relative simple case, you need to run for a really long time really long times to get good statistics. Okay. So let's imagine that we run, we arrive to a hundred seconds and let me go and let me open this case, the final solution. Okay. So let me get again, these statistics. I'll copy that there. And just to show you the final solution after you let this simulation run for a really long time and that's up to you. Okay. See that this is their instantaneous value. Okay. So we're in a 200 seconds actually of sampling your instantaneous velocity. And then you can look at your, all your statistics. Okay. Resolve K mean velocity, whatever. So let's look at. So this is BX prime. This will for me will be the fluctuation that actually there is something there. The pro ah, okay. Yeah. I need to gather. It. I didn't gather those. These are the fluctuations and you have mean quantities, mean velocities, everything. So Okay. So that being said, okay. Okay, the last part that I want to show you. So the monitors here, if I go here, residuals, 
plot. These are your monitors. So see a lot of iterations. So about 40,000, more than 40,000 iterations. And we can plot this one. Let me plot this one, for instance. Plot. Plot. Okay. Uh, stash that is not plotting because the data should be there. But let me go here. And I want to load the data for the wall shares, this one. So it's reading the data. And now let me go here, plug the signal. And this is the signal. So see that starting from zero all to 200 and see that these values are oscillating. So I don't want to use the first 100 seconds. So click to range. I don't want to use the first 100 seconds. And this is what we have. Okay. So we have a value, a mean value of 1.15. So this is very high. Okay. This is about 15% of error. Okay. But remember this mesh is square. So you need to refine this mesh. So as you keep refining, you will get close to one. Okay. But this is see that the le this is exactly the same mesh for less than runs or runs. The runs or runs will give, will give you precisely one. But then in these models that you are resolving those scales. Okay. And you have a good, a good mesh, a fine enough mesh, you are adding a lot of error. Okay. But this is the idea. Okay. So you have here everything. And for instance, remember that we can do some plotting of the normalized velocity profile. So in this case, I have a line there I'm plotting in this line there. You see this line here, I'm plotting these profiles and see that I have here also the Q criterion to visualize the strip lines. Okay. So see that these lines are, are rather thick. They are not as nicer as in this case. Remember that this mesh in this case is a, is a very fine mesh. Okay. So it's about two, three millions. Okay. So it's a very fine. So I resolve, we resolve better the structures there, the coherent structures here, as we have a rather coarse mesh with that is what we're getting. But there you see, you have the idea. Okay. So just to plot that velocity profile again, I have all the monitors. So I compute all the quantities there. So what we can do is here. I already put here my custom fields, Y plus U plus. Okay. And okay. So, blah. so let's choose. Okay. So, blah, blah, blah. so here should be okay. Custom fill and will tell. Okay. Utau and Access okay, so ba bam that one okay apply so ba bam so in this case why is giving this one oh okay yeah I think yeah I, I run a couple of iterations so I think I lost the data so let me go to the DNS yeah I think that is a problem I said run I erase my statistics. So be careful just to, to that. Do not override the final because you, it may happen that you, that you might erase those statistics. Okay. So let me go back here and here I should have. Okay. So see that now he, I moved to the other U plus Y plus see that this looks familiar. Okay. And let me load the validation data. Okay. And let me put those profiles that we're used to. So I put it there and see what is happening here. This is the DNS data and see that it's not doing the blending here. Okay. In that position that we're sampling, it, it is fitting better the laminar solution. Okay. So this is the problem here. This mesh is not a good mesh. So see that that 15% of error also translate here in a deviation for this theoretical profile. Okay. So this is the DNS. Okay. And I can do the same. The, the, we can do the same plot for the, for the last. So let me go back to the, to the last. If, if I didn't erase that there or yeah, I think it was the initial state there. So that was it. The, the DNS. So now let's take a look here. 
Okay, yeah, I lost that data. Okay, but let's go to, for instance, grid case. Let's go now to the urns. Okay, so I have there. So if I go to the urns and I try to do the same plot. Okay, I have it there. And we need to put it in log scale there. And see that we have this, and you already start to see the difference here. So if I plot this, tan 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 tan. Okay, I need to compute the rise. Okay, I using the run scaling here, so I need to scale in the to scale in the right way. But see that now when I translate it here with the right scaling, it will do the the, the proper fitting here. Okay, so probably in the runs I have the. The right, so I need to revise this. Okay, I don't know why this is translated there. Okay, so I have the runs. Okay, in the runs. Okay, let me do something. Well, probably I'm using the, the run files the old files so let me go here and let me update those files or better let me go and open those cases so let me go here so i think those cases are already play around and overwrite overwrite the, the information there so i will go here Fluent case, let me go Urans, let me open this. Okay, so at this point I will go and here. And now this is okay. And I will put there and see that now using the urns we have a good agreement I see that is fitting very well here in your region and here there are, remember this is buffer la layer so here the errors are, are large okay so this doesn't mean by no means that this is wrong and actually we have the good solution we have one pascal when we have that at the wall the wrong solution here will be at the actual fitting to this okay so just to recall to show you that is you plot wall fluxes, wall shear stress, top button, see that you have precisely one. Okay, so actually it is the, the, the correlation that is wrong in this case. So see that, that that is not universal and you will see that different in the buffer layer where you have the largest errors. The same way I can go and so I will update the, the, the data that you can download, but the problem is the previous data. Yeah, I, I overrode that, that data with something else. So now I'm opening the less. And again, we go here. Crossing fingers that we're going to get the right values. Okay, so I think there is a problem here. Okay, why? Okay, the less is also, but the previous one it was statistic. It was what I was using previously. It was okay. U plus. Okay, that was the problem. So now I have U plus. Okay, and I can load the data for comparison. Let me say everything. Okay, and if I plot here, see the difference. So if you recall the, the, the DNS, the DNS was kind of trying to fit this one. See, this one is now a midway between this and this, okay? So again, this is the model kicking in close to the wall, but still the mesh is not good enough. Okay, so if we plot here, you go here, so see basically we're sampling here. But the mesh that we have in this case is not good enough to resolve well all these structures and everything, okay? So that requires some refinement in the mesh, but 
uh, to stress also that that refinement is not normal to the wall, okay? Not necessarily normal to the wall. Okay, it's also here, and let me, it's also this span-wise and stream-wise distance, okay? So maybe normal to the wall is okay now because the, the less it works with wall functions, but then you have this all other that <coughs> directions now spam wise and strings while that is, are giving problems. So the case that you see here, the solution that you see here is a, is a quite fi fine mesh. Okay, so look at here, it's very fine f to the wall. So that's why it's giving much better results. So, okay, that's all for this case. So as you see, if you try to run this, it will take a long time just for the statistics, okay? But setting the case is relatively easy, okay? Here, there is not though, all those options that you have with when using the K Omega, the, the standard runs or runs models. Here, you just pick one and that's all. The important thing is just to choose a good numerics and then also your, your, your mesh, like the wall, okay? Usually, you should resolve also the other wall distant Unix namely delta x and delta z. So that's all for this case. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.